This is the first section of chapter eight, numerical methods. And here we're gonna be looking at solving first order differential equations. Now you've come across different methods for solving first order differential equations. You've come across what we call analytical methods. So analytical methods, these are algebraic ones. So we've learned how to solve them by using the separation um, of variables. That's in pure two. You would have learned how to solve them by using the integrating factor, which is in core two. And in chapter six of this book, you would have also learned how to um, find a series solution uh, using a Taylor expansion. So that was a series solution. And that was like the Taylor or the Clurin expansion, depending on what the initial conditions were. And that's also, well, this is in FP1, chapter six. So these are analytical methods. Now, what if you can't use an analytical method? What if you cannot use an algebraic method to solve a differential equation, whether that's like first order, second order differential equation? Well, this is where we'd use a numerical method. Okay, and numerical methods, what they do is they give us uh, approximate solutions to differential equations, first or second order differential equations. And the numerical method we're going to be looking at is called Euler's method. So what is Euler's method all about? Okay, it's all to do with using tangents and realizing that dy dx is the tangent. So if we've got a, a first order differential equation that is dy dx equals some sort of function of x and y, we know what the tangents are. We know what the gradients are. And we're gonna use that to help us to find out um, a solution to a differential equation, starting with a first order differential equation. Now, my, why might we do this? Why do we solve differential equations? So if I've got dy dx, for example, equals uh, 2x, start with something nice and easy. The reason I would want to solve that is because um, I want maybe to find a value of y from x. With a differential equation, you get to find the value of dy dx from x. So you start with x, it will give you dy dx. But what if I want to find the value of y? Well, if I want to find the value of y, I need to know what y equals, don't I? And with something like this, we can integrate that and we'll get y equals x squared plus c. So once I calculate C, I can then use my X coordinate to find a Y coordinate or use my X value to find a Y value. We're using a numerical method to do this. We're using Euler's method to allow us to start with an X co coordinate and you, or X value and use it to find a Y value without having uh, this, without actually having the general solution or particular solution because we can't do it analytically we're using this numerical method to uh, find a value of y uh, from a given value of x so let's see how this works let's say i had this differential equation dy dx equals x squared plus y cubed yeah, it's a function of x and y. Let's say that I'm not able to integrate that. 
and let's say I've been given some initial conditions. So let's say I've been told that x0 is 1, y0 is 1. So they're my initial conditions. And what I want to do is to estimate the value um, of y when x is 1.1, for example. So let's draw out what this might look like. I have no idea what the graph looks like, so I'm just going to draw a random curve. Yeah, so let's say we've got a, a graph that looks like this. Yeah, let's say that this is the, the graph of y, but we don't know what y is. Um, and what I have is one for y, one for x. Okay, so I've got this point here. Now I've been given the differential equation. So if I substitute in y and x, I can actually work out what the gradient is here. And the gradient at this point would be 1 squared plus 1 cubed, it would be 2. So I'm just going to draw a line which just shows a gradient of 2. So let's say we've got a line that goes like this. And let's say that 1.1 is here. Now if I use this graph to try and estimate y from 1.1, it's close, but it, it's just an estimate. So I might estimate y is about this value here, whatever that is. OK, so I worked out the gradient. I, I sort of drew this little line here and I could probably get a rough idea of what y is when uh, x is 1.1. OK, let's say um, I wanted to estimate y when x is 1.2. OK, so let's put the gradient of this line on. So this line that we worked out had a gradient of 2 like this. We now want to go up to 1.2. Now I'm going to use my value for 1.1. So for 1.1, if I go up to here, I could work out what this value of y is here. Because what have I got? I've got the x value here. I've got the gradient of 2. So using that, I can work out what the y value is. Now, because the gradient is equal to the change in x, sorry, change in y over the change in x, I can work out what the change is here. I can work out what that little change is and then add it to 1 to work out what the y value is. If I rearrange this, I get that the change in y equals the gradient times the change in x times change in x. Now we can uh, call the gradient dy dx and the change in x, what we're going to do, we're going to call them h. Each one of these little steps up we'll call h. So the change in y is going to be the gradient times by h. So the gradient is 2, uh, h is 0 0.1, 2 times 0 0.1 gives me a change, let's do this, 2 times 0 0.1 gives me a change of 0 0.2, which means that this new y value is going to be 1.2. So we'll put 1.2 here. So what have I now got? I've now got a new x value and a new y value. So initially I had 1 and 1, now I've got 1.1 and 1.2. And I'm going to use these new coordinates to work out a new improved gradient. So I'm going to put 1.1 in here, 1.2 here. So 1.1 squared plus 1.2 cubed. That gives me a new improved gradient of about 2.9, so it's going to be slightly steeper. So it now goes like this. OK, so this is my new improved gradient. And then I, I go through these steps again. 
of working out what this y value is from this x value and I will use the gradient to do that. So this is what we call an iterative process where you repeat steps over and over again to get our estimate um, of a value of y for a given value of x. So let's formalize this and write down uh, the formulas that we're going to use. So let's start with this thing h. So h is what we call the step size. In the example that we did, that was 0.1. So the step size is what you keep adding on to x. So we start with x0. And then the way that we get x1 is that it's x0, initial condition, plus the step size. And then we keep adding on the step size. So we're now going to use the letter R. So we'll say that x r plus one, the next r value is the previous r value or x value plus h. OK, so we'll just put a box around that. That tells us how to work out the next value of x. You notice that in each step we worked out the gradient. So we started off by working out the uh, gradient dy dx using the initial conditions. So we put like a little zero here. This basically means the gradient initially. So a gradient using initial conditions. Gradient using initial conditions. But we keep working out the gradient, don't we? Um, as we went from x0, the initial condition, then we went to 1.1 for x, then 1.2. So we write it like this. So this is going to be the gradient that we work out uh, for a particular given value of r. OK, so in all of these, r starts with 0, then 1, then 2, and so on. So we'll just highlight this as well. So we work out the gradient for a particular value of x. The last thing we did was we said, right, to find the next r value, which we'll write as y r plus one, the next y value is approximately the previous y value plus, now what did we do? We multiplied the um, gradient by the jump size here to work out the change in y. So it's the previous last value plus the change in y, the workings over here. So we times the gradient by this jump size h and then added it onto the previous y value. So the next thing we're gonna write down is that it's h, so there's the step size, multiplied by the gradient and that will be dr. So these are all the important bits um, that we need. H is the step size. If we keep adding on the step size to x, we get the next value of x. We're going to be working out the gradient at a particular value of x. And then to work out the next value of y, we use the last value of y and we multiply it by the gradient here and the step size. OK, so y equals f of x satisfies this differential equation uh, with an initial condition written like this. Uh, use two iterations of Euler's method to estimate the value of f of four, given your answers to two decimal places. So the first thing we're gonna do is just to write down the uh, formula that we're gonna use, which is to find the next r value or y value. We take the previous y value and we do h times by the value of dy dx. Right, 
So now when we do these types of questions, it's best to do them in a table so you can keep track of what you're doing. So let's start by writing what we've been given. Actually, let's draw it as a table like this. So the first column of our table is going to be R, so 0, 1, 2, so on. This is going to be the value of XR here. Y are here, and then the last column is going to have uh, dy dx. So dy dx r. Now my initial value of x is here. It's three, and I want to get to four. And then it says using two iterations. Now we go up in uh, equal jump sizes. So if I'm, my first value, my initial value of X is three and I'm using two iterations. That means I want to finish four after second iteration. So you could think of R being the number of iterations. That means this needs to be 3.5 here. We always go up in equal step sizes. And the question is all about What's this number here? Given that we start with x equals 3 and y being negative 1, what is the value of y when x is 4? Can we estimate that value? And that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So now we use the um, differential equation here to work out the gradient, so those values are going to be going in this column here. Right, so let's do the working over here. So this value of dy dx is going to be x squared, so 3 squared, plus y, which is negative 1, divided by y squared, so negative 1 squared, minus x minus 3. So it's going to be 9 minus 1 over 1 minus 3. So that will be 8 over negative 2. So we get uh, a gradient of negative 4. So that can go into this column here, negative 4. OK, now we use this here. We want to find the next y value. We want to work out what goes here. So the next y value is the previous y value times by h. And in this case, h is 0 0.5. I should write that down. So h equals 0 0.5. I can see that from here, the jumps, 0 0.5 jump, 0 0.5 jump. So let's do the working over here to find out what goes in that box. So y1, the next y value, is equal to the previous y value, which was negative 1, plus h, which is 0 0.5, times by the gradient, the previous gradient, which was negative 4. So if I work that out, that's going to be negative 1. Uh, plus negative 2, so that gives me negative uh, 3. So this y value here is negative 3. Right, now I've got that x and y value. Let's work out what the gradient is. So that's what I'm going to do here. So to find that gradient, I use the gradient function and substitute in these values of x and y. So it's going to be 3.5 squared plus negative 3 over negative 3 squared minus 3.5. So we just substitute in the x and y. Right, that gives us 9.25 over 5.5. So 9.25 divided by 5.5. Gives us a gradient of 37 over 22. That's the exact value. 
and we want to stick with exact values because um, we don't want to round to the end. You could write down the decimal and then um, uh, make sure you use the answer button. So now we're ready to move on and complete the question. So we've done one iteration. Uh, we're ready now just to finish this question off. So now we're going to work out what goes here. So now we work out y2. So y2, using the formula up here, is the previous y value, which was negative 3. We just worked that out. We worked out from the previous iteration. Plus h, 0.5, times by dy dx, and that is 37 over 22. Now it gives us minus 95 over 44. But it does say to give your answer to two decimal places, so we're going to press the SD button. Um, this uh, value exactly is minus 2.159090, and it seems to be recurring. Um, so, yeah, we can just write down that um, estimating the value of f of 4. So when x is 4, what's our estimate for y? And our estimate to two decimal places is negative 2.16. So that will be our estimate using Euler's method. OK, you should now be able to do exercise 8A on pages 164 to 165. So a quick recap at this point. And the only thing we really need to know is how to find the next Y value, which is this. So now we're going to be looking at something called the midpoint method, which is just uh, an improvement on the method we've been using before. So I suppose you could call it Euler's midpoint method. Now, before we've been working out the uh, gradient of the tangent here at our initial condition, x0, y0, and then what we've done is we've used that tangent to work out what the y value is. Yeah, which would be, let's mark it in on this diagram. So that would be this value here. OK, which we would call uh, y1. But notice the difference between our estimated value for y1 compared to the actual value. This gap here is the error between what we've estimated y1 to be and the actual value of y1. Now we can overcome that problem by taking a smaller step size. So our step size was this side. If I actually uh, take this off here and make the step size smaller. So let's say that instead of our x1 being here, our x1 was here instead. So we've got a smaller step size. Then when we work out our value for y1, you can see actually it's much closer to the actual value, whereas here it's it's further away. So we can become more accurate in our values of y by decreasing the step size. There's also another way which we can increase the accuracy uh, when we work out y and that is to consider a chord uh, between two points where our initial value is the midpoint hence the name midpoint the midpoint between these two values of x here one we call x1 one we call x minus one okay so you can see that this chord here and this tangent are pretty much parallel 
um, so we can use the the gradient of this of this chord here uh, as to, to find a better estimate for y1 okay our next value of y so let's have a look this gradient so dy dx at our initial condition so put zero there is approximately equal to so using the um, gradient of the chord rather than uh, the gradient we were working out before the gradient of the chord is going to be the change in y now this goes from y1 to y minus 1 so y1 minus y minus 1 over the change in x and that's going to be the difference between these two so that's x1 minus x minus 1 but we know from before that we call this little step size this little jump h this is also h so actually the difference between x1 and x minus 1 will be 2h so we can write this instead as y1 minus y minus 1 over 2h so what have we got so far that our gradient at our initial position is approximately y1 minus y minus 1 over 2h now we can rearrange this to make y1 a subject and that will give us y1 is approximately y minus 1 plus 2h times by dy dx at our initial condition now since this is going to be an iterative formula then we can replace our zero here our negative one and one here with r and if we do that we get this formula y r plus one is approximately y um, r minus one plus two h times by dy dx r and this is for r equals zero one two and so on so this here is the bit that we're interested in this midpoint method uh, for estimating a value of y in one of these um, differential equations okay it says use the midpoint formula with a step of 0.25 to estimate the value um, of at x equals 0.5 of the particular solution to this differential equation and it passes through this point 0 2 so just like before we're going to put everything in a table uh, but before we do that we're going to write down our values so um, h is 0 0.25 x 0 is 0 y 0 is 2 and we want to find x r and we'll work out what r is in a moment when it's 0 0.5 so i think that's going to be actually x2 isn't it because if we go up in steps of 0 0.5 that's what we're going to get to so just like before we're going to do this in a table so the first column here i'm going to have r 0 1 and then we'll work out in a moment how far we need to go i think it's up to two this column will be x r so x zero is zero then we'll have y r here and then the last column dy dx r Right, we can also put in y0 that's 2 and since our step size is 0 
x1 will be 0 0.25 and then x2 will be 0 0.5. There's our step going up by 0 0.25 each time. So let's put that in 25. Okay, you can see over here I've written down the two Euler methods that we've talked about. So this first one here, that's where we work out the uh, tangent or the value of r y from tangent and this will give us like if we've got y0 it will give us y1 if you've got y1 it will give us y2 the new improved method which uses like the midpoint where we're looking at the uh, chord and the uh, gradient of the chord if you know y0 it gives you y2 if you know y1, it gives you y3. So there's, there's a jump here. So we can't use this straight away. Yeah. We use this one to calculate y1. And then once we've got y1 and we've worked out what the uh, gradient is, we can then put it into here. Yeah. And along with y0, you'll see how it works. So the first thing we're going to do is to fill in uh, this part of the table here, which means working out the gradient using this using 0 and 2 so I'll just do some working over here so it's going to be x times by y plus y all over uh, y squared plus x squared so I believe that's 2 over 4 which is a half so I can put in this box here um, that the gradient is a half so now I can use this formula here to work out y2 and I'll do my working uh, down here. So I'll just show you what I'm doing in this box here. So y2, sorry, y1 <coughs> will equal y0, uh, which is 2 plus h, step size 0.25 times by the derivative or sorry the gradient for the initial conditions which is a half so if I work that out I will get y1 as 17 over 8 which is 2.125 so that now goes into this box here 2.125 and again, I'm going to use the uh, normal Euler method, this one here, to calculate um, not this method, sorry, I'll use dy dx here to work out the gradient here. Right, so I'm working out what goes here. So it's going to be x times by y 2.125 plus y 2.125 all over y squared 2.125 squared plus um, x squared which is 0 0.25 squared now that gives an exact value of 170 over 293 um, i'll write down the decimal um, but we're going to be using the exact value so 0 0.58 zero to dot 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 but we'll use the exact value so now we're going to use Euler's midpoint method to work out this value of y so basically what we're doing is saying well we've got a chord that goes between x0 and x2 y0 and y2 and we know the gradient of that chord what's this value of y that's basically what we're doing so let's now work that out so it's now just a matter of plugging the values into the formula. So we have y2, and we're using this formula here, equals y0 plus 2 times by h, so that's 0.25, times by um, dy dx, at um, 1, or well, not at 1, but when r is 1, 
So this is what y2 is going to equal. y0, so that's 2 plus 2 times 0 0.25 times by, well, the exact value was 170 over 293. And we'll see what we get when we work that out. So 2 plus 2 times by 0 0.25 times by and i could probably press the answer button because i think that's the last thing that i did over 293 and we get um, an exact value of 671 over 293 and uh, yeah we'll put that in the box 671 over 293 and uh, that's 2.29010 and so on. Um, we need to give our answer to four decimal places. So um, our value of y2 is 2.1234 so decimal places. So there we go. So this method is a combination of Euler's normal method, where we use the tangent, and the midpoint method, where we use the chord. So we use this first, which allows us then to use this. So you should now be able to finish this section by doing exercise 8b on pages 167 to 168. So a recap of Euler's, Euler's methods. So we have this tangent method where we can approximate a value of y uh, using uh, an initial condition, a, a particular set, step size, and working out what the gradient is. And that'll give us like y1, and it's an iterative method. So once we've got y1, that goes in here, and we get y2, and so on. At each stage, we're working out um, the gradient. Then we have uh, an improved method, which is called the midpoint method, which basically considered, considers a chord. And uh, we have this iterative formula. Now, when you use this, your first step will be to use this tangent method because you're going to need y1 um, so that you can work out dy dx at one, and then you'll have y0 here. So it might be worth me adding a a uh, little note here is that we uh, need to use need to use a tangent. That's my name for it. Tangent method first to find uh, dy dx after the first iteration. And then once we've got dy dx at the first iteration, then we can use that in here along with y0, then to find y2. And then after that point, we can just keep using uh, this uh, chord method. Now, advantages and disadvantages. With the tangent method, if we can get smaller step size h, this will give better uh, accuracy to our approximations of y. And with the midpoint method that we have here, where we're considering the chord, it gives better accuracy because that chord uh, will often be closer to the curve than the tangent. The tangent may veer away from the curve, giving that sort of error that we talked about before.